Hallelujah. All right. I want to say thank you to Apostle and the, and the prophetess and Pastor Bill and the elders for allowing me the opportunity to speak before you. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Ephesians chapter 4. And I don't believe I'll be before you long, but I just want to get to you what's in my heart. And um, I really like and really enjoy um, the whole house being in a new, a new place, new anointing, Amen. new refreshing. Uh, we thank God for it. We thank God that the house apostle as well as the whole house has pursued in prayer uh, to this place of a new anointing, a new refreshing, and that we're, you know, receiving the benefits from this new anointing and new refreshing. I think pursuit is key when it comes to experiencing a new and fresh uh, move and experience with God. Because if you do not pursue, uh, it could be pretty, pretty rough. Uh, have young children in here, so I want to watch my words as far as what I want to say. Uh, because when you're pursuing God and when you have given up a lot of things, because some of you I've heard uh, prophetess and I've heard more of you as well, you have given up a lot of things. And, and I'm not saying that to, to, uh, to push you up or anything like that or to even sound prideful, but I'm just telling the truth of what it, what it really is. You've given up a lot of things. You've given up uh, places, cities, or even states, or even countries to live in. You've given up a lot of possessions, um, a lot of jobs that may uh, interfere with what God is doing. And so it's a lot of things that you give up in pursuit of what God has for us all. And we know that when we, uh, when we continue to pursue, and we're already at this next level that we're experiencing, but as we continue to pursue, we know that there's going to be refreshings and multiple types of outcome uh, for our good, and we'll experience those things. Um, and I just love the word pursue because if, uh, it's just a wake-up call for those who don't pursue. You know, you can, because uh, one thing that's worse to me than not knowing the will of God is to know a degree or a direction that God is moving in, but you fail to do anything with the direction that you get. Me and Vi, we talked about this a while back. Remember, we was going to prayer and it's I just, you know, we were talking about how frustrating it can be when you can know what God is doing. Because if you, if, you, if you don't know what God is doing, you're out of the will of God. Okay? And, and, and then if you know what God is doing, you're going the other way, you're out of the will of God. But to know the will of God and don't press in, you're out of his will as well. So even though you've given up cities, houses, land, and everything else, you're still out of the will of God because you know what to do, but you fail to do it. So you're still out of the will of God, okay? Because the will of God is never still. It's always, it's full of life. It's always, it's always moving, okay? So um, with that said, we're going to look at Ephesians 4 and 11. And what we're going to talk about tonight, we're going to talk about infrastructure. Oh, inf yeah, infrastructure. And uh, that's just a word that came to, um, came to me or, or came out of my spirit or, or just came to me um, some weeks past. Really didn't do anything about it as far as studying upon it or anything. Um, I looked it up in, as far as the, the definition and what it means, but I didn't do anything about it. And then, um, so then uh, tonight um, I was asking, well, what, what, what should I uh, talk about? Um, you know, since I have this opportunity, and then this, this came up, okay? I should have did more as far as studying it weeks past, but I did not. But I'm just going to give you what I have. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Ephesians 4 and 11, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers 
for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Okay? I want to talk to you about infrastructure, give you a definition of it. Um, The basic uh, infrastructure, the basic physical systems of a country or population or nation, we'll say kingdom, kingdom of God, including roads, utilities, water, um, sewage, etc. These systems are considered essential for enabling productivity. Developing infrastructure often requires large investment. Okay? So when it comes down to infrastructure, we're talking about the foundation that, that a city or a nation runs by. Um, the support system that supports every individual as far as having uh, um, roads that we live in and having houses, utilities, um, um, electricity, sewage, the water system, all these things makes it habitable for um, the people that will be living. It's inviting when you have a nice infrastructure. It's a sound place. It's a safe place. And when we're talking about an infrastructure here, we're talking about a structure, um, the, the core structure on the inside of a church that makes it habitable for God. And as a result or byproduct of God being here, people are drawn and when they come inside, they're changed and developed and so on and so forth. So that's what we're, that's what we're talking about. Uh, those, uh, that infrastructure are the materials that are needed, okay? Um, God can move any way he wants to, but he, Uh, has a principle and a pattern that he uses us. So we are the materials that are being used to build a habitation for God that will invite people. So when we're dealing with infrastructure tonight, we're talking about what are we doing as an individual as well as a house to provide a, a place for people to come into. It's very important that we provide an infrastructure or structure or core or we become a core people. I know we have your core people already here, but I'm talking about everybody within the house that we become a core people that will allow the structure in God of God to be here. Because a lot of times, I know Apostle have said it, I know Pastor Bill have, have said it, when you have a core uh, group of people, um, but a lot of people are doing a lot of the work. A lot of times when that happens, you can, you can burn an engine out, okay, all right? And I know we're supplied life by the power of God, but still, still, when you have a lot of things going on, it's important that we all chip in and become an infrastructure. I know because this is a house of truth, a lot of times there have been hundreds upon hundreds of people that have been here, but the people didn't stick, okay? The people didn't stay in that, and, 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 and it's not because that God wasn't here. It, sometimes it's because of uh, the, the people won't buy into the vision, or the people may be um, conceited, maybe in, into themselves, or maybe get tricked or fooled and deceived by the enemy and, and, and take flight. But either way, those people are not here, okay? Because of that, you got to core people, and a lot of times when it comes to an infrastructure, once you make that big investment initially, okay, uh, a lot of times by just by momentum, things begin to run and run and run without that much intense labor, okay? Um, in the spirit, though, because we pursue God at all times, we're always running and we're always going, okay? But because there's not a lot of, uh, the, a lot of people that were here are gone, we're still having to redo the same, the same things to get people that come in here that are new, get them a foothold in so they can stick and stay, okay? All right, are y'all with me? All right, so it's important that we have a a good infrastructure. 
within ourselves as well as when we're together and when we're unified. Let's look at Revelations real quick. We won't be before you long, but I'm, I don't want to run and scream. I just want to talk to you. And um, chapter 3, verse 14. Sometimes when I'm not running and hollering enough, just talking monotone like this, y'all get kind of sleepy. But y'all just gonna have to sleep tonight because I ain't gonna run and holler and scream tonight. <laughs> Revelations 3 and 14, unto the angel of the church of Laodiceans write, these things saith the, the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works and thou art neither cold nor hot. Uh, I would thou wert hot, cold or hot. Um, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither hot uh, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now, I'm not coming uh, with a doom and gloom because we're, we're in a whole nother realm, okay? We're in a whole nother realm and we going into the anointing, but it just, I just want to confirm what I told you initially from the beginning, all right? Uh, about, about when you're pursuing and you've made great strides and you're pursuing, but a lot of times you get kind of in the middle of the road and then you kind of kind of lack off a little bit because you're not pursuing and because you're not pursuing you're miserable okay you know what God wants you to go but you're not there yet okay and then you've seen all the things that you let go of and that makes you miserable so you're kind of stuck in the middle and if you're not pursuing God uh, and by that relationship that you see the grace of God the goodness of God and you begin to see him you fall in love with him you don't worry about your surroundings but when you kind of cool off and 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 look at your surroundings and what you've quote unquote giving up and where you're at and then you see that over there but you hadn't experienced it yet, a lot of times frustration sets in okay and uh, and the reason why I'm focusing on this is because when you're dealing with people okay because because when it comes down to ministry we're dealing with people okay when we begin to look at ourselves instead of what God is doing when we begin to look at our situations instead of what God wants to do then we become crabby real crabby and we'll begin to have a bad attitude, okay? And then we'll begin to, begin to be faithless or, or lesser in faith. And the love starts lowing down. And then the people that God sends to us that we've prayed in because we're having crabby and having a bad attitude, guess what? Those people who are supposed to stick, they won't stick, okay? Because before they even get to apostle, we done chased them off. We chased them off with our bad attitude. We chased them off because we're not loving. We chased them off because we're not, we're not doing what we're supposed to do in our relationship with God. We're looking at ourselves instead of looking at what God is doing. And when that happens, even though droves of people come in, it, they go out one, uh, come in one door and go out the other. And then, we're, and then we get mad and say, well, well, what's going on? Tell you what's going on, okay? It's us. We're sabotaging what's going on. We're sabotaging um, our, our um, intercessors that have been praying. We're sabotaging the work, and that could easily be done. That could easily be done. You could pray to somebody, but then come in and have no love, and you're cold towards them, and then you chase them off. Okay. So all the all the angels that have put time in, intercessors that have put time in, praise and worship that have go up before God to make this place habitable, and before they even get into the city of the gateway, we've already chased them off. All right. So those are some things that we're going to have to, to work on when it comes down to our infrastructure as well as ourselves, as well as with each other. All right. When it comes down to infrastructure, let's go to Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2 and 19. And we, like I said, I don't have a lot to give, but I do have to give. Ephesians 2 and 19. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophet, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the spirit. Okay. You must have a love for Jesus. Okay, that that's that's one of the core um, core um, core materials I say or core makeup when it comes down to an infrastructure. Okay, if we are the infrastructure, we're supposed to be made up of these things in order for us to function right. Highways and roads and electricity brings makes a nice place or a habitation for people to come in. Well, once again, we're wanting God to come in. 
okay? And then once people come in, we'll affect them, get, uh, help them, love on them, and they become delivered and changed, okay? In order for that to happen, we got to have one of these main materials. And one of the main materials is that we have to have a love for Jesus, okay? Jesus, his name should be on our lips at all times. Jesus, for him to be on our mind at all times, because if we don't have a love for Jesus, we can never have a love for somebody else, okay? Okay? So Jesus is, is, is the main reason. He can provide you. Oh, thank you. He can, I've, uh, I was going through some. Just last night, I was going through something and, and just really thinking about, um, just thinking about everything. And I got a hold of something and just looking up. And, and, this, and, it, and it was ministering me. It told me one thing. Um, Jesus can, can provide you everything except the love for him. That's it. He can provide you more. It's like BASF, you know. We do more, make things better, okay? But the thing is, he can't make you love him. He can, now if, you, if you pursue him, concerning healing for your body, he got that. Materials that you need for your family, he's got that. The lift of your head, he's got, he's got that. Everything you need, he has. The only thing that he does not do for you is make you love him. That's it. He can do everything else. But he can't make you love him. Okay? So when it comes down to our infrastructure, we have to have a love for Jesus. If we're here, it's because we love Jesus. We're not here out of obligation. We're not here because we just want a nice place to stay or, or, or a nice fellowship. Or we're not even here because, you know, we love just love people. Our first love is Jesus. Jesus is our first love. And if we don't have that love, we're missing the key component for our infrastructure. What makes us stable? What makes us stand through hard times and good times? What makes us love everybody, irregardless of where they come from or how they act? It's the love for Jesus that keeps us here. It's the love of Jesus that is the anchor to our soul. Okay. All right. So number one, that's, that's our love for Jesus. All right. Another, uh, another one is St. John 14 and 6. We're going kind of fast, but 14 and 6. The second part, um, another, another um, key component for, for infrastructure or for, for us is to embrace truth. We must embrace truth. Okay? Uh, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So truth. Jesus is the truth. We have a love for Jesus, but when we have a love for Jesus, he paves the way. Okay? He paves the way for us to understand truth. And he is truth. And then here's the light. Here's the light that exposes more truth to us. So in order for us to have truth, we have to have a love for Jesus. But when we have a love for Jesus, he paves a way and makes a way for us to embrace truth. And he reveals truth because he's the light. So every day, every day, he's revealing more truth. So we have to have a foundation in truth. Why? Because when we have more people and minister to more people, they have different mindsets. All right? They may want to come in here and their mindset will be changed because they love Jesus. But remember, Jesus said, I am the way. Okay? The truth and the life. So if we love Jesus and present Jesus to them, then he is the way that they can change their mindset. But until we present Jesus and have a love for Jesus, nothing's going to change. Okay? So we have to have that foundation on the inside of us that we love Jesus and we love truth. Because we love truth, he's going to make a way for us to provide truth to somebody that's going to be a light to them so they can change their mindset. Okay? All right. Let's go to Hebrews 10 and 24. Uh, something that's very important as far as our, you know, our infrastructure infra, um, is 10 and 24 Hebrews. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Um, we have to um, assemble ourselves together. It's important that we go to church. Now, I've been missing some Wednesdays. I've been quite a few Wednesdays, even some Thursdays because of my work, work situation. But blessed be God, we, 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 we rub and pray all over that, okay? Because not, not because um, um, you're a sinner if you don't go to church or if you don't go to church every time the doors open. But, there needs, but, but because we love Jesus and because we love what he's doing, that ought to be a hunger for us to meet with each other, okay? Ought to be a hunger because when we get together, something's going on. 
that somebody new that's come in the building. I want to love on somebody that, ha- that needs to be loved on. And I know God has provided a way. Somebody's new at that church. I want them to see my face. Why? Because if I see a ministry, I want them to know they have somebody they can call on. Somebody they can... Um, Um, come and talk to. Just let them know who their family is. We ought to have that love because if we're stagnant and we're not going anywhere, then, well, you know, we don't have to be there. But if there's life and there is life here and there's life being produced here, there's always somebody new. If you notice one thing about Gateway, whether you like it or not, whether they stay or not, but still always life coming. There's always somebody new coming. Always somebody new coming, maybe passing through. I don't know, but there's somebody there. And every time there's somebody there, maybe not somebody new, but somebody's always here that you need to love on and embrace, okay? It's very important. That's, that's one of our core things. We need to love on one another, okay? All right. Um, the Bible says the world will identify us or the, we will be set apart from everybody else because of the love that we have for one another, the love that we have for each other. So let's get a hold of that. Let's turn to First John. Let's talk about love for just a moment. First John 4 and 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Meaning this, if you are born again, you have the capacity to love. There is no excuse. You have the capacity to love. So to say you can't love somebody is a lie from the pit of hell. You can love somebody. You can love everybody because when you're born again, you have that capacity. You have that new nature on the inside of you to love. The only thing you have to do is what? Have the want to. I know they, I can't, they're getting on my nerves. I know I've, I've been hurting times, but I know all this and all that and, and whoop the whoop in the third and the fourth. But the thing is this, if I love God, then he will help me in the areas that I'm weak to love other people. For us not to love each other is no excuse. There is no excuse for us not to love one another. There's no excuse. It's, it can't be tolerated. Can't be tolerated. All right, it's got to come off as far as us loving one another. Whether we like it or whether I like it, just because I got the mic in my hand doesn't make a difference. We must love one another. Okay? He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that he might, that we might live through him. Here in his love, okay? Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins or to be the sacrifice for our sins. We said this one time on Friday night. Love doesn't start until God is in the picture, okay? Here in his love that God loved us first, meaning that you can't even get started with love unless God is in the picture. All right, so if God is in the picture, if you have a relationship with God, then you can love, okay? The more you experience a relationship with God, then the more love you can have for everybody else. If your love meter is low, it's because we're not having time with God in order for, because the thing is this, when you really get get an understanding, I believe Prophet Leonard talked about it, and I think Apostle talked about it, when you really consider the debt that you owe, the debt that you could not pay, then you don't have an excuse not to love. I don't care. You, you, the way you are or how you were born, you didn't have nothing to do with that, okay? You really didn't do anything special getting on this planet, okay? Most of us, what we have, we have fathers and mothers or whatever that we're here because of somebody else. So it's really not that we've done anything too, too big at all. It's because of the grace of God that we're here. It's because of his mercy that we're here. So who gives you the right or what authority do you have to treat somebody bad? Where do you get off thinking that in our minds we think this? I'm better than you. Where do we get off thinking that we're better than somebody? Who made you? Okay. God did. And then by your parents coming together, all right, you are the way that you are, okay? Or as far as, far as your makeup physically. So really, you didn't really do too much of anything. And even if you worked hard and with your education stuff, you had to develop or depend on teachers. Now, some, some people are gifted as far as, you know, they have that, that chromosome. I can use prophets. Got that chromosome. You just, you know, you and maybe in the second grade and you figuring out eighth grade stuff. You know, you have that. But once again, it was our parents you know, that DNA just came. We really hadn't done anything. So where did we get off thinking that we better than somebody? Where did we get off snubbing our nose? 
We got a God that we got to face. We got a God ha- that has set in motion a move in this, north, um, this northeast Georgia area. And he's wanting us to be a part of it. But in order for us to be a part of it, we got to do it his way. Okay? And the way we do it is by love. He said the whole world's going to know who we are. We're going to be separated by every other religion, every other mindset, by the love that we have for one another. Now, if we can't love each other, how are we going to love the world? Who wants to be a part of it? And that's something that's, so when it comes down to infrastructure, on the inside, these are the things that we're going to have to work on in order for us to be fitly framed together because if you're fitly framed, you're touching each other. You're touching. So if we're touching and we're always beside each other, then, then we got to get to know each other. Okay? We got we to love each other. Okay? All right? So those things are very important when it comes down to, um, when it comes down to uh, being the house and being the structure that God wants us uh, to be. All right, uh, let's turn to Romans, well, Romans 8, 26. Y'all know it, y'all probably can repeat it, but I'm still going to uh, read it out for those. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for, with, for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. In order for us to get to that spot or the to get to that place, that next place that we're going, because we're already in a new place. Hallelujah. We're already experiencing a new anointing. That new anointing is is helping us and propelling us to what? Push even farther. To go a little bit deeper. The the worship song was said to go even deeper. I want to know your heart. I want to know your heart. I want to go even deeper. All right? Well, that's what the anointing is doing. To have a relationship with God, to push down even deeper, to love God more. That's going to help us to love each other more. Okay? So when we're praying and in our prayer time, so another important thing for inf- as far as infrastructure that's needed is prayer. And we've been doing that. We're pushing ourselves in prayer even more, pray even more. But we just don't pray just to pray. There's, there's a, we pray because there's a purpose in our prayer. There's a, there's a method. That's a reason why. Because we need to be more like him. We need to give up more of ourselves and be more like him. Not for ourselves to experience ourselves, but to experience other people. Okay? And to be able or be conditioned that when the people get in here, we can handle them. Okay? Okay? When you have people with anger attitudes and abuses and, and uh, we, I mean, you got people on uh, uh, mental health medication. You have people that have been, um, um, have been scarred and abused and all different types of things when they were younger. Uh, people with uh, all types of uh, uh, phobias and people, all these types of things, they're wanting to experience God. Okay, but who's going to be patient with them? And it's not that all oh, we got there knowing God is going to zap you and that's it. Okay, well, or even if when He does zap you, you still going to have to change that mindset because that's a spiritual. That's in the Bible that says, "Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed." That's a responsibility that every believer has to do. So even if they have some issues with their mindset and, and, and God just totally delivers them from from all a lot of things emotionally, but still they still going to have to deal with that way of thinking that trail that's been there for years that they need to change. Who's going to be there with them? Who's going to help them process through that? Who's going to show them the way? Yeah, be firm and disciplined, but still be tender and sweet too. That's what we're for. Pops can't do it. Uh, Even the eldership just can't do it all. Can't do it. It's going to be us, okay, that can love on people and do those types of things, you know, and to be able to say and speak to them and love on them that way. That's how it's going to build. The world will know us before the love that we have for each other. So when you come inside the building, we're going to love on you. Now, the love on you don't mean that we just do everything that you want. All right? And we're just going to let you do what you want and, and cause disruption. No, no. That's, but it's a way to do it. That's a way to do it. You know, that back in the day, um, old, um, um, uh, before, before here, you growing up, old Pentecostalism, ways and you had your, um, your holy rollers and, and everything and I love them uh, but so, now some people will be just you know fire and cause a mess but some people will be so sweet you know if you if you if you if you're a lady and you came in and, you, and your blouse was a little bit too low one of those old mothers will come and tell you they'd be smiling they just love on kiss you on the cheek and love on you and why they doing that they up they buttoning your buttoning up your shirt 
Or if, you, if you're a guy and you, your pants got too tight, you're showing your crotch, a guy will love on you and everything, but he'll about to unclothe you and put some more pants on you or do something for you before you can get, because they're, they're loving on you, but they're showing you there's a way to do this thing, okay? Now, sometimes we go into legalism and it went kind of crazy, okay? But we're at a place now that, we, that, we, that we've been taught to stay in the middle of the road, okay? See, in the real, middle of the road, and we have, we have seasoned people and prayer people here to let us know when we're, when we're kind of veering off. Okay? But we have to be able to, not just, by, not just the eldership, but us that's been here for a while should be able to dress up somebody in a nice, sweet way and love on them. That they won't be, off- that they won't be offended, but they'll know, hey, I need to correct myself, but they were so sweet doing it. All right? they, they stand for something, and they don't take any junk off anybody, but they're so sweet when they do it that I, that I, can, I can understand that. So we just have to be tough and tender. Okay, because that's that's a part of our um, infrastructure. Um, just just another one. Don't um, don't self destruct in the middle of the road. Don't self destruct in the middle of the road. Because once again, as we're pursuing God, uh, enjoy it. You know, enjoy. It. Let's praise God. Lift up our hands and give Him praise. And and, and like uh, uh, um, Prophet has just said, uh, you know, in the morning we make our confessions. We praise God, but still. Throughout, throughout the day or throughout the week, don't self-destruct. Don't get focused on the things that you may have given up. Think about, the, think about the glory. Think about the plan that God has and keep pushing that way. Because when you think about how sweet he is, then you're going to be sweet. Huh? When you think about something sweet, it's going to be sweet. You know? if, you, if, you, if you had a, um, something sweet like a pineapple and then you eat some ice, the ice tastes a little bit sweeter because the, the residue of the pineapple is still on your mouth. So we can be sweet to people, you know. Be strong and be firm, but still be sweet to people, okay? Uh, talked about fit, fitly joined together. Another key thing, and it may sound, it may sound worldly, but, it, but it's not. It's not. Um, communication. Communication is key when it comes down to infrastructure. Uh, and when cities... Um, Build cities, they have to have communication. When, when there's trouble, we have 911 that we can always call. You know, you, you, you feel safer when you have those, um, those poles that, that are real high. You know you have, can have access to 911 no matter where you are, way in the city or, or way out in the country. You still have access um, to, to communicate with somebody that if you need help, it's there, okay? Communication is key. Let's turn to Proverbs, the um, 26th chapter. And I'm not being nasty when it comes down to this scripture, but it's the word. So it's not nasty, it's for our good. Okay? Proverbs 26, and we're going to look at verse 20. Okay? A lot of times when you want to sabotage a move, you deal with the communication. All right? You deal with the communication. Case in point, Tower of Babel, they was doing everything ungodly, but they was building, building a platform that was going to reach to the heavens. God confused the language. It stopped. Anytime there's war, you know, you want to cut off the supply, water supply, any type of resources, but you want to also deal with their communication because if they can't talk to each other, the plan is out of whack. Okay? All right? Husband and wife, you want to get problems in your family, in your household, stop talking to each other. Because when you stop talking to each other, then the only thing I got is what I'm thinking. And my thinking is all out of whack. Okay? And if you admit sometimes your thinking is all out of whack, you know? So, communication. Let's look at it. Proverbs 20, excuse me, Proverbs 26 and 20. Did I say 26 and 20? Okay. Let me get it real quick. Um, where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tailbearer, the strife cease. Okay. As coals are to burning, as coals are to burning coals, and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. The words of a tailbearer are as wounds. They go down into the innermost parts of the belly, burning lips, and a wicked heart are like the potsherd covered with silver dross. He that hateth disassembleth with his lips, 
not with his hands, but with his lips, and layeth up deceit within him. Okay, so when it comes down to um, communication, we have to make sure that we communicate the right things, that we communicate to each other. Because if we don't communicate, then a lot of times assumption is there. And the devil wants to put things in your ear. He wants to put things in your mind. And you begin to assume things. You begin to put two and two together. Well, it's really not two and two that you need to put together. Okay? I've been in churches in times past that, uh, that I would, and, and a lot of times, uh, and maybe this is a fault of mine that I need to do better with, that I've been addressing, but I would just be quiet. And you will have a person here, uh, uh, Javani, can you come up here for just a second? Callie, come up here, baby. Izzy, come up here, baby. All right, you just stand right here. And uh, you and Izzy just act like you're talking real quick, talking to each other. All right, all right. And then, now, Izzy, you just stand right there, and now, Callie, you go talk to Vi. All right? All right. Now, now a lot of times in, in ministry or anything, all right, the person that usually comes first to tell, tell you something, a lot of times they're the tail bearer. All right? In my experience in times past. So that kindles up strife. So you, you just loving all of her and, and everything. Yeah, she just telling me everything the truth. But you assume everything because, you, because if you're spending time in prayer with God and everything, then you know like Apostle tells us, you know, there's your story, there's your story, and in lies the truth. So you get to assuming things. People tell you something, you get to talking amongst yourselves, and I've, now, not here, but I've, I've noticed in times past, even in churches, times past, the person that's, that y'all all buddy, buddy, loving, loving, when she leaves, this person loves you half to death. They building you up. But from her mouth, she's tearing you down. And because we fail to have light and communicate with each other, clear it out in the open, you got a mess. So now you assuming that she's your enemy, not knowing that the devil's using her, and now the whole thing is in a whole mess. That's what happens. It happens in families. It happens in friend relationships. It happens in the church. Okay? When it comes down to... Y'all, thank you. Thank y'all. When it comes down to a church structure, family structure, whatever structure, we have to have communication. You can't have y'all these funny feelings and then not be able to tell somebody why you got these feelings. Okay? Because a lot of times, it's just a matter of just making an adjustment. Apostle tells us that Kenneth Hagin said uh, sometimes in his faith he just have to make an adjustment. Sometimes we just have to make an adjustment. Okay, sis, I was wrong about that. My bad. Correct me on that. Help me out with that. Help me out with that, Pastor Bill. Because I got some tendency, you know, to, to think, you know, this way and that way. When we communicate each other, now, communicate with each other can be a nasty thing sometimes, okay? It can, not, but it can get kind of messy, okay? But anytime you're dealing with human beings, it's going to get messy. Go to, a doc, go to a hospital. They're going to take your blood. They're going to get your urine. They're going to check your saliva. They're going to do all that. They're always dealing with body parts. It's always messy. But it's for your good. It's helping you out. So a lot of times, if we're going to love each other, okay, and love on each other, the first thing we got to do is communicate what's going on so we can identify wherever the problem is, and then we can get past it. But a lot of times, when we hold all these things in for years, we got schisms and isms and all types of stuff going on, and we wonder why, what's going on? I can't get any further in my life, what's going on? It's because we're letting these things like bacteria spread, it's like a disease, okay? So when it comes down to an infrastructure, we have to love God, we have to love each other, and we're going to have to communicate with each other, okay? And if we're wrong, guess what? We're wrong. It reminds me of my oldest son, Victor. My oldest son, my oldest son, Victor. When he was small, he did not like to lose. Even now, Vaya can attest to this. If he lose, he will start just crying. I mean, just crying. And he got it on us because I about cry if I lose something to a football game. I'm about ready to cry as well. But the thing is this: you cry because you hate losing. We cry a lot of times because we hate being wrong. We hate being the one that stirred up some strife and now we got to talk, repent. 
because we're afraid that, well, since I said this, now everybody's going to look at me as somebody that's called. Everybody have done it at one time in, uh, in their life. And I, let's not act like we're so, we're, so, uh, we're so holier than thou that we've never said nothing wrong or just listened to somebody say something wrong and count. <laughs> you still took a part of it. All right, so, so for, for all of us, including myself, to act like, you know, we haven't taken a part of anything, then we, we're really lying. You know, we're really lying. We've all taken a part. But the good thing about it is, none of us can say, hey, I've never have. Now, you may have not done it in years. You like, uh, like Jesus told us, here's the man that is no God. You've worked on it, though. In order for you to get to that point in your life, you've worked on it. Okay? So that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to work on things to be able to say, hey, hey, you know, um, I won't say anything negative about my sister. I won't say anything negative about my brother at all. Now, we need to work on some things. We need to work on some things. But they're, they're a valuable asset. They're in this house. God got them here for a reason. And even though they look like the devil's twin brother right now, we can still work on them, cast that thing out, and begin to work on them that, that they can change. And they can systematically change to love on them. But we got to be patient with them. That means that we don't compromise with them. We just have to be patient with them. But in order to be patient with somebody who gets on your nerves, it takes a lot of death. So God is looking for people who is dead enough to deal with folk that just, ooh we Here they come. You know? But we have to be to that point. And that kind of hits what uh, um, Nessa told me while I was over there in prayer. She came and told me this. And, and I thank God for her because she came to me and she said, hey, this is what, this is what I'm sensing. About, you know, about you, auntie. And you hit the nail on the head. She brought by for just a, just a witness. Hey, is that what going on? Yeah. And basically the thing was death. You got to die. Like Apostle always said, me and my wife always said, when we get to feeling all this right here, it's some life there. I'm caring about what folks say. I'm caring about what folks think. I'm caring about myself more than I care about somebody else. I'm caring about how I look in front of other people instead of about the truth. See, all those different types of things, those things have to die, you know. Those things have to die in order to have a strong structure that people can come in and it won't be such a burden on the apostle or as well as the elders. We have to establish that, okay. We have, we have to do that within ourselves, okay. Um, see, uh, okay, uh, one, one last thing or next to the last thing is, is fear, fear of association. We have to love. We have to love people. I'll, but let's turn to First John again, uh, and this will be the next to last scripture, and then we'll be out of, out of here. <clears throat> let's see if I can find it. All right, First John three and sixteen. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because He laid down His life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren, but whoso hath this world's good and see if his brother hath need and shut up his vows of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? Not meaning that you get, that, that there's, there's need to be some balance there, you know, yeah. when it comes down to, you know, supplying good stuff. But I just want to talk about to the fact when you see somebody struggling or when you see somebody in something, if it's not material, just to pray for that individual right. yeah. or pray that you can have something to say to that individual. Pray that you can love, you know, love on that individual, you know? This person, to me, God, this person, you know, they seem like they're struggling, they need some, I see they're going through, I see these people going through some things. How can I shut up my bowels of compassion? I may not have much to give, but one thing I do have, I can give unto them, and that's my time in prayer. They may not even know everything that I'm doing. I may not want to be all over them all the time, but the thing is, I can sh- spend some time in God for them and ask God for a breakthrough on their behalf. How can we see people suffer and don't even pray about it? You know, at least we got to have that type of love, okay? To pray for people who are going through things, okay? Uh, some other, um, some other um, foundational things and things for infrastructure, praying, forgiveness, praise, worship, giving, tithe, sacrifice, fasting, um, and a whole bunch of other things. But let's turn to our last scripture for tonight. And that's in Proverbs and 14. Now, we have it, uh, was having a Bible study on Thursday night. And we were talking about relationships. I think it was Rhonda was in there. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, Gay and, and my wife and 
call and, and more and more. Um, and we're just talking about relationships and, and because um, during that time, I think Apostle was teaching on, I think uh, Pastor Bill probably preached on Friday night as well as um, Prophet Leonard was talking about, just talking about relationships and all those different types of things and what it takes to do that and what we try to do is just uh, glean what we, what we, what we hear and, and, and regurgitate it and talk about it. Uh, but uh, it's dealing with relationship. But he brought this out. He brought this out, and I just want to um, say, wait, wait, there, he, there he is back there. Um, Proverbs 14 and 4. And he talked about this, and I told him before I got up here tonight, I wanted to talk about it a little bit. He said, where no, ox, where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. Okay? So if you don't, if, you know, if there's no ox around, uh, the crib is clean. That, that the place that you, the trough and everything, it's, it's clean. The crate of the crib that they eat out, it's clean, okay? But when you don't have that ox there, a lot of that labor as far as planting and, and tilling and doing all that stuff, you're going to have to do that, all right? And how many know when you have an ox um, tilling, it's, you get a lot more stuff done. I may get about a plot or so done just by myself, but if I have an ox, it's going, I have this whole room done before, you know, before day's end, Okay? So that's the benefit of an ox being there. And an ox sometimes symbolizes a servant or service, all right, dealing with work, dealing with people, dealing with ministry, okay? So an ox can get a lot of stuff done. Am I saying it right, Carl? Am I, am I about hitting on it? Okay, all right. So when the, so when the ox is there, uh, you're going to have to feed the ox. And what does the ox do? It poops, right? Yeah. Ox poops, Okay. So when you're dealing with the ox, it gets messy. A lot of poop going on there, all right? When you're dealing with people, it gets messy. A lot of poop going on there, all right? All right? But the thing is, even though there's a lot of poop and a lot of mess that you got to get through when dealing with people, when you, get, when you work with the people, a lot of stuff gets done. Kingdom business gets done. More people have more finances, it gets done. Oh, Aunt, 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 uh, Aunt Walida, she, if she gets delivered, the whole 99 relatives in her family gets delivered, okay? So even though you have to go through all that poop and all that stuff dealing with that individual, it sets off a chain reaction that you know it's only God. You know it's God. Because when that chain reaction is done, when that person is changed, it changes everything, Okay? So the thing, so what I'm saying, to, what I'm saying tonight is strengthen your core, strengthen the infrastructure, strengthen yourselves, strengthen your relationships, strengthen every, strengthen your focus, strengthen your vision, because in this new, uh, this new uh, anointing that we're experiencing, it's giving us a power, it's giving us a supply to go even further, to go even deeper, to see things more, to see that hey, I do have an anointing. I'm a part of a body, I'm connected to a body. And this anointing that's on the, um, the head and that's on the eldership as well, I'm a part of that. That means I'm looking to make an impact. I'm looking to make a change. And I'm looking to condition myself to love on somebody. I'm looking to condition myself to love on somebody that has a bad attitude, that has an anger problem. I'm going to love on them. I'm going to be with them. And even though their looks and their intimidation won't bother me at all, we're going to see through that and see the hurt that's in that person. And I'm going to deal with that thing. And it's going to cause a chain reaction because when the world sees that that person has been changed, somebody's going to cry out to Jesus and say, Lord, I didn't know it could happen. But that person has been changed. That person has been delivered. It, that person has been set free. Apostle can't do it all. Elders can't do it all. Because I'm not talking to them. I'm talking, I'm talking to y'all because we're all on the same, we all on the same on, on the same plane. This is what we do. This is what we do. Let them do what they do. But what we do, we, we folks in the center of neighborhoods, communities, we, we're part of the people. I, when I watch wrestling, I love Ric Flair. I'm gonna close with this. And I love Stone Cold Steve Austin. And the Lord, I'm telling on myself. And one other person I love, I love The Rock. Okay? Because he was the people's champ, though. Jesus was the people's champ. He was among the people. You couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't if he was in a crowd of people, you didn't know who he was. You just know that, that's, that, that's that dude. <laughs> that's all you said, that's that dude. Well, that's what we need to be. 
We are the ones that's going to cause the groundswell. Do you hear me? We set the standard, we raise the floor. Okay? That's what we do. And I'm not talking about, I'm not, I'm not getting the elders out of it, but the thing is, they're doing enough work as it is. I'm talking about us that's just, that, that go out and come in most of the time. Now, we're working, but let's, 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 let's make a groundswell amongst our community that's going to cause people to come. If, they don't have to come on Friday. They don't have to come on Sunday, but they need to be changed. They may not come on Sunday morning, but they need to, they, I want them to be, especially Sunday morning, though. But we need to get them in here. We need to get them saved, get them delivered. And you can do it. You can do it, and I can do it. And you don't take, it don't take, a, it, it doesn't take much. It just takes your willing to follow God because at the beginning of the message, I said this, the only thing that Jesus can't do is make you love him. But if you pursue him, he'll supply you the, uh, an anointing that we're now experiencing already and provide you everything you need to win somebody. There are no excuses. No excuses from me. No excuses from you. It's time for us to create a groundswell. The people to create a groundswell. That means, that means everything is coming up. We, we raising up everything. Once again, we set the standard. We raise the floor. Who's ever below this standard, you're coming up. Why? Because we're here. Because God's here. Okay? Okay? I hope you got something from this. I want you all to um, stand for just a moment. Um, before we leave, if anybody needs any prayer, uh, here's now an opportunity for you to come down for prayer. I can truly say if you were here this morning, yeah, that was such a great move. You're probably doing uh, cartwheels. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Nobody's coming. So uh, you receive. Providence Linda, thank you.